Hello and welcome to this week's episode. Today we are going to read a fragment of 1984 by George Orwell. In small, clumsy letters, he wrote, April 4th, 1984. He sat back. A sense of complete helplessness had descended upon him. To begin with, he did not know with any certainty that this was 1984. It must be round about that date, since he was fairly sure that his age was 39, and he believed that he had been born in 1944 or 1945. But it was never possible nowadays to pin down any date within a year or two. For whom? It suddenly occurred to him to wonder. Was he writing this diary? For the future? For the unborn? His mind hovered for a moment round the doubtful date on the page, and then fetched up with a bump against the newspeak word double thing. For the first time, the magnitude of what he had undertaken came home to him. How could you communicate with the future? It was off its nature impossible. Either the future will resemble the present, in which case it would not listen to him, or it would be different from it, and his predicament would be meaningless. For some time he sat gassing stupidly at the paper. The telescreen had changed over to strident military music. It was curious that he seemed not merely to have lost the power of expressing himself, but even to have forgotten what it was that he had originally intended to say. For weeks past, he had been making ready for this moment, and it had never crossed his mind that anything would be needed except courage. The actual writing would be easy. All he had to do was to transfer to paper the interminable restless monologue that he had been running inside his head, literally for years. At this moment, however, even the monologue had dried up. Moreover, his varicose ulcer had begun itching unbearably. He dared not scratch it, because if he did so, it always became inflamed. The seconds were ticking by. He was conscious of nothing except the blankness of the page in front of him, the itching of the skin above his ankle, the blaring of the music, and a slight booziness caused by the gin. Suddenly, he began writing, in sheer panic, only imperfectly aware of what he was setting down. His small but childish handwriting struggled up and down the page, shooting first its capital letters and finally even its full stops.